Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. My name is Adrian, and today uh, we're going to be revisiting the Hydra's deck and make it into a Rock Hydra. Not not the card that is on the reserved list. No, we're just going to make it into a deck that is resembling the Rock in Modern, but it is going to be Hydra's inspired. It's the essence of Hydra's, you might say. So, if you haven't seen the other Hydra's deck, the basic idea is we're going to be using Winding Constrictor and Hardened Scales to get extra counters on Hydra's, specifically Hydra's like Feral Hydra, Mana Gorger Hydra, and Mist Cutter Hydra. And yes, we do have other creatures that are not Hydra's. We're going to call them Hydra Enthusiasts. We have Scavenging Ooze, Scrounging Bander, and Walking Ballista. Again, all of these get counters on them in some way, so we are running them because why not get extra counters on Walking Ballista? And, uh, yeah, eating cards that graveyards seems pretty rad as well. Now we did say we were playing the rock, so we do have rock type spells. We have Thought Seize and Inquisition of Cosellect. Again, hand removal, hand hand removal? This is like decapitation hand stuff. No, uh, hand disruption. So we can move cards out of our opponent's hand so they don't remove all of our stuff. We're a little bit of a glass cannon, so we want to do that. We also have Fatal Push, Abrupt Decay, and Assassin's Trophy to do just general removing stuff, specifically creatures or other things that may get in the way for us. As far as lands are concerned, we have Blooming Marsh, Verdant Catacombs, and Overgrown Tomb because in order for your deck to be competitive, you should be running at least a combination of these lands. Not saying that this deck is at all in any way competitive, but I'd like it to be a little bit more consistent than some of the decks I've made in the past. As far as lands that I have that are not these lands, we also have Nurturing Land and Field of Ruins to help us with other uh, land-related activities, and then uh, Forest and Swamps to, you know, round it all out. Sideboard-wise, we are running some Creature Hate, and then some General Hate, and then some Graveyard and other Hand kind of Hate. A little bit of Tron Hate, because everyone needs a little bit of Tron Hate. And then Blossoming Defense and Liliana of the Last Hope, because we are a little bit of a Glass Cannon. And that is the entire deck, so let's uh, go play some games and see if I can actually win a match or two with, um, Rock Hydras! Game one. We won the die roll. We are playing first, and this is an awesome opening hand, so we are going to go ahead and keep this thing. Leading off with Blooming Marsh, followed by an Inquisition of Kozilekt. See what our opponents got in their hand. Looks like we are playing against 8-Rack. Uh, what are we taking out? I can deal with Smallpox. I can't deal with Mind Wrench, followed by a whole bunch of other hand disruption. The opponent plays a Swamp, followed by Shrieking Affliction. Not surprising. So I played a Blooming Marsh, and here's my next dilemma. Smallpox is going to make me discard a card, sacrifice a creature, and then sacrifice a land. So if I play a creature, he's just going to Smallpox next turn, and I'm going to have to get rid of it. So I think I just hold up. I'm just going to pass it to my opponent's turn and do nothing. So another Shrieking Affliction. Now, we could obviously just Abrupt Decay one of these. I think that's what we do, because there's not going to be much else that we're going to really want to get rid of, and having double Shrieking Affliction is going to be really bad. Our turn, Hardened Scales, seems really rad. I think that's the way we go. I think we go Hardened Scales. I think it's going to be Walking Ballista, because if he plays, um, if he ends up playing the Smallpox, then we can just ping him for two damage. I feel like our opponent is thinking really hard whether he plays Smallpox or not, but it looks like he's not going to go for it. Um, our opponent's also going to Thought Seize us, <laughs> so he's going to take Mana Gorger Hydra. Taking damage from Shrieking Affliction, uh, so I think it's like, it's really going to be something like swing for two, play Mana Gorger Hydra, and then our opponent, even if you play Smallpox, we still have Mana Gorger Hydra at that point. So, so opponent is going to Coligan's Command, destroy artifact, deal two damage to a creature. So I guess we ping our opponent for two. I think our opponent missed, missed did the math, because this guy gets two counters on him, not one. So Coligan's Command actually does nothing for him. Our turn, we take three damage from Shrieking Affliction, followed by drawing into a Thought Seize. So at this point, we can, again, take a card out of our opponent's hand, make this guy a 5-5. Five five. And obviously, you can probably guess it, we're going to take Smallpox. Double Shrieking Affliction, that's scary. <laughs> so we take Smallpox, so we don't, can't sack this guy. And then we are swinging for five, so we're putting our opponent on a three-turn clock. Our turn, taking six damage from Shrieking Affliction at this point. Uh, we need a spell. Land, land kills us. Well, unless it's that land. Uh, scavenging Ooze does do it. Um, in theory, we could also gain life with that, uh, but I think we just swing to our opponent's face uh, and see if he has anything to say about swinging for a 9-9 when he has 9 life left. Shanks 8-rack. Let's go to game 2, please. Hail Hydra. Hail Hydra, please. Going into game 2, I'm going to take out all of this junk and I'm going to put in all of this junk. This is kind of a shady opening hand, but I think we keep it because we get an Inquisition twice, which I'm kind of down for just to remove everything out of my opponent's hand and then play Mana Gorger Hydra, and hopefully uh, action will happen after this. Opponent leads off with the Swamp and a Raven's Crime, so I discard a card. 
Ooh, hardened scales is also pretty rad. But I think it's gonna go uh, nurturing peatland into an inquisition. See what our opponent has in hand. Take a damage, which doesn't feel great. But at least we can get rid of stuff that we know we don't want, like Liliana of the Vale. Um, Grabbing our master is also kind of annoying. Get rid of Shrieking of Fiction now. He's not gonna play Liliana next turn because he only has one land. And our opponent did draw into another land, which is uh, is a thing. Mind you, this makes us we don't have to pay life for this. And what do we get rid of? I think it has to be the forest. For our turn, uh, <laughs> we definitely got another Mana Gorger Hydra. I think it's just going to be Inquisition into a Hardened Scales. Uh, nice thing is we don't have to pay life for this anymore, which is kind of funny. And obviously, as much as I would love to get rid of the Rabble Master, I think we have to get rid of Liana, mostly because he doesn't have a mountain. <laughs> so our opponent is kind of just stuck with a Rabble Master in hand and not much else. Oh, and remember the time I said our opponent didn't have red? Uh, he drew into another land, so our opponent plays the Rabble Master. Run down the Blooming Marsh. Please go like this. I guess the one thing is... No, I paid life for that one. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, if our opponent draws into a smallpox, we are in a bad place. We, if our opponent doesn't draw into a smallpox, we're in a good place. Or he'll just play a Raven's Crime, and uh, we will just have to discard our other Mana Gorger Hydra. That being said, he just made this guy 3-3, so now we can just jump block for days. Assassin's Trophy on the hand, that actually is super helpful. So I think we actually Assassin's Trophy the Goblin Rabble Master away, and then we just swing for 5? I mean, we're putting our opponent on a really short leash at this point, even though we have no hand and he has... I mean, his entire deck is geared towards us having no hand. Um, another Mana Gorger Hydra. I think we just run it down. Run down a Mana Gorger Hydra, making this Mana Gorger Hydra bigger. Yada, 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 yada. I'm putting my Hydra on your face for seven damage. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know if he realizes Trample is a thing. I guess theoretically if he has a Fatal Push, he could just push the Hydra. Nope. And our opponent decides he wants to scoop the match, can't deal with the Hydras. Yes, right. You, opponent, should hail the Hydra. Okay, let's uh, let's go to the next match and see how we do. Opening hand for game number two, I won the die roll once again. I feel I'm super lucky today. Is uh, It's going to be freaking rad. Uh, push Inquisition. Man, this is like, this is a snap keep kind of hand. Blooming Marsh into Inquisition for our opponent's hand to see if he has anything exciting. So it looks like we are playing the Green-White Stoneblade deck. Uh, Eternal Witness would be annoying, but I guess we kind of have to go Stoneforge Mystic and then push the second Stoneforge Mystic. So we are going to do the thing where we run down a Verdant Catacombs, then we are going to run down a Hardened Scales. Opponent plays Stoneforge Mystic. That's right. Mind you, I, I will say, I'm going to have the unpopular opinion at this point. I think Stoneforge Mystic is terrible. <laughs> just going to throw it out there. Do not think it is a good card because it just, it's just like dirtling super hard. You just dirtle, dirtle, dirtle um, nonstop. So he's gonna just go and spend time, gonna go get something. I'm just gonna blow it up. I just don't care. So yeah. So he does get Sword of Feast and Famine, which is great against my deck. But again, I just don't, I just don't care. Push, goodbye, don't care. I think we do play the Verdant Catacombs. We run down Scrounging Bander. And then we pass it to our opponent's turn and see what he has to say. Fetch up an Overgrown Tomb on the end step. Next turn, Feral Hydra, and then we just start running away with the game. So our opponent, Eternal Witness, obviously grabbing Stoneforge. Unfortunately, we do draw into a Swamp, which is not what we want. So Feral Hydra, and I think we just tap out. We just max him. Make him big. Opponent is determined to keep the Stoneforge Mystic in play. Not really sure why. Again, we're going to overrun him real quick. So here's the great thing. This is why you're playing Scrounging Bander, by the way. Uh, Scrounging Bander can put a counter, putting a single counter, onto another creature, which then puts two counters because we have hardened scales in play. So by removing a 1-1 one, one off of him, this guy turns into a 6-6. Six, six. So blocks. He is not blocking. So we go 1, 2, and 3, making him uh, an 8-8, eight, eight, which deals a bunch of damage. And then on our second main phase, we actually just play Scavenging Ooze, which then we will start eating stuff out of graveyards and making our life much more interesting. Opponent is literally just drawing all the lands. He has drawn all lands all the time. Hasn't even played his Windswept Teeth yet. He still has a fetch land in hand. Uh, so there's Sword of Feast and Famine, which he... So we go like this, putting counters on the Scavenging Ooze. Again, just putting one counter, because we can get two counters on Scavenging Ooze at this point. Hit OK, makes him bigger. Managorger Hydra seems freaking rad. So I think it's going to go like this. And then if he doesn't block him, we actually pump him by two as well. Sure? I guess? For our second main phase, we're going to play the Mana Gorging Hydra. So Devoted Druid, making Mana Gorger Hydra a 3-3. The problem our opponent has right now, sure, he has, he has a sword, 
that he can block for days, but when we have four creatures that are huge, it doesn't really help him at all. Or three creatures, technically. Not four, three. Counting, counting. Doing counting now. So search your library and or graveyard for a creature cost with quarter mana cost two or less. So I think we actually eat his stone forge out of here and we eat the eternal witness, even though he's not gonna grab a creature with two. Um, I would just rather eat all of them now. Uh, I'm sure he's actually gonna grab give her ruins again. Grounding Bander goes on this guy. Yes, again, trample. That's the whole reason. Trample is a reason. So we lose the Scrounging Bander. Again, we turn a 2-2 into 6. Ah, it's a land. Go to combat and attack for days, I guess. Attack with all creatures. <laughs> uh, see what our opponent has to say. Loses one of the combo pieces if he's going to go combo off. So that's the thing. And he also loses the Giver of Ruins. So we're going to feel the Ruin the Temple Garden right now just to get rid of it. Um, obviously, with uh, Scavenging Ooze, we're going to wait and we're going to eat a bunch of stuff in his graveyard. Uh, later on, not this very second, but we will eat stuff uh, probably mid his turn, to be quite honest. And we did have another planes. Neat. Okay. Again, we still have a ton of big things. So our opponent needs two pieces of removal, or a batter skull, or a bunch of other stuff. So look, come on, I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, hydras. Who? No one expects hydras. They're like, what is this? Is this, this guy's just playing a worser version of the rock? It's all our opponent's thinking. I'm thinking, hydras. I, no one expects Hydras. <laughs> there we go, we're going to sideboard. I, I just want to point out quickly before we actually go to the next game, I actually have the wrong sideboard. I was originally testing out Unearth, um, but this is supposed to be Abrupt Decay and Maelstrom Pulse. But yeah, let's go to game three and see how this deck actually plays out, seeing how our opponent got super salty and just dropped uh, after game one. So yeah, let's do that. Opening hand is a little bit slow, but it does have all the pieces to make an amazing deck. I Ideally, we do want hand reception opening hand, but I will take three mana Gorge Hydras. I'm just gonna be greedy. That's all I'm doing. I'm just playing terribly because I'm greedy. It's game three. I've just had two wins. I feel on fire, and we're playing against likely Burn, which I, I have a really, really hard time beating. So let's see if I can win this match. Uh, it's gonna be Verdant Catacombs. We don't have a turn one play, or it could be another Stoneforge deck? Who's playing? Who plays red white with Stoneforge? Okay, well, um, sure. Our opponent's gonna go and fetch up some kind of thing, and we're just gonna fatal push Stoneforge Mystic. Back to the place where you belong, which is the graveyard. So Blooming Marsh into a Winding Constrictor, pass it to our opponent's turn, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we draw a land and then we just go Mana Gorge or Hydra, Mana Gorge or Hydra, Mana Gorge or Hydra, Mana Gorge Hydra. Plays a land and passes back to us. Sweet! Jeskai Control with Stoneforge. That makes more sense. Spell Queller. Good play on our opponent though. I'm gonna say that, I mean, that's, that's a good play. Hiding out and then playing the land after, so I'm like, oh yeah, it's gonna be this, and then it's not that. Running down another Stoneforge Mystic. Mana Gorge or Hydra presents mana like we have a push. And then next turn, we can actually play Feral Hydra and a Mana Gorge or Hydra. Um, or that. That's also a thing that he can do. So, opponent, Stoneforge Mystic's. A, what, is it going to be a Batter Skull? I'm assuming it's Batter Skull. No, it's Sword of Feast and Famine. Um, I guess Sword of Feast and Famine on a flying dude is really obnoxious. 4 5, untap all your lands. Ugh. Guess we go like this. 1, 2, 3. Mist Cutter for two, swing for a couple. Lightning Bolt for that guy. Makes this guy less good. Yeah, I think this is us going to the next game. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna scoop it. We're gonna go to the next game. Going to game two. Going to game two. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Going to game two. That's all there's that's all there's to it. <laughs> Sideboard. Going into game two, we're gonna take out all of these guys here, and we're gonna put in a little bit of glass cannon protection with some blossom defense and assassin's trophy. So this would be an extremely greedy hand that we absolutely cannot play. <laughs> I just would love to actually keep it. Uh, this is actually surprisingly keepable though, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and keep this guy. Yes, we just play a forest and ship it to our opponent's turn. Coming back to our turn, Blossoming Defense is much better. I don't really wanna play the Walking Ballista and I don't really wanna play Mist Cutter Hydra. Mist Cutter Hydra on one seems kinda crappy. Walking Ballista on one also seems kinda crappy. Okay, Mana Gorger Hydra, you do feel like an excellent card, quite honestly. So we're going to run down the Mana Gorger Hydra. Mana Gorging Hydra. I'll just play Field Rune, because then next turn we can actually blow up his Colonnade, which I think feels really, 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 really fun. Is he running the Sahili combo in here? He's like, he's like, he's like, why, why play one kind of combo deck when you can play two combo decks? Uh, so, um, I guess that's a thing. So I guess we're actually playing not against... We're not playing Jeskai Control, we're playing Sahili Combo Stoneblade. Just for reasons. Reasons far beyond my possible understanding. 
the other way around. So it's gonna be Miscutter Hydra, and we're gonna go green, black, whatever color, it doesn't matter. Play Miscutter Hydra. This guy gets a plus one, plus one counter on him, which is great. And I think we kill Sahili because if he gets one more land, he can theoretically just go infinite. So we kind of have to kill Sahili. Opponent plays sort of light and shadow, just like straight up. I don't see what he gets out of that. So I guess we run down Winding Constrictor. So we go full out attacky tack attack. That's why we kept blossoming defense. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, that's right. So he gets much bigger, <laughs> much, much bigger. Uh, 11, 12, 13, so hitting for 13 seems pretty rad. Yeah, opponent didn't see that coming. That's, uh, that's a little bit of a pants around your ankles there, my friend. Wrath of God, on the other hand, that is a card that is uh, that gonna make me have a bad day. Play him on three. Uh, it'd be rad if he had counters, if we did have the Winding Constrictor. Uh, but at least this way, if he does try to path it, we can put him down to one. Um, and if he doesn't have an answer, we can swing and then put him down to zero. Detention Sphere. So it enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent. That's a thing. So what is he going to target? Obviously going to target this guy. Um, which means in response, we need to remove a bunch of counters from him and deal a bunch of damage to our opponent's face. Which puts our opponent to one, which means we do need to find a way of dealing one damage. Hardened Scales does not do it, but we can feel the rune a bunch. Stoneforge Mystic is not the card we want to see right now. <laughs> Urgh, Stoneforge Mystic! Uh, so what is our opponent going to grab? He's going to show us what he grabs. It's probably going to be a batter skull. That seems like the, the, the healthy choice right now is batter skull, because he can at least gain a life with it. So, uh, Scrounging Bander doesn't quite do it, but it is a good start. Opponent's getting brave and decides to attack in. That's that's very good. Uh, what does this do? It gains, he gains life with it, though. And our opponent got the fifth land, which means he's going to just play batter skull, which is unfortunate for us. Uh, that being said, it's if we run into <laughs> abrupt decays or anything like that, uh, we can always just kill the germ token. Inquisition doesn't get us there. Um, actually, Inquisition is a really bad card for us. <laughs> really bad. Uh, Geist Geist. I think our opponent might just have us just out of sheer value. So, do I need to block four, five, six, seven damage? The answer is no. I'm going to take it like a real champ, and our opponent's going to go up to like. So, here comes Geist. That's not great for us. Verdant Catacombs is not going to do it. I think that's game for us, actually. So, uh, well, I we can't win them all. Can't win them all. I mean, theoretically, I can. No, no I can't because he's going to have a flyer. So yeah. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be the end of game three. So yeah, it is what it is. So all in all, I think the deck is actually really fun to play. It's when it does its stuff. It really, really does its stuff. It's super funny playing Mana Gorger Hydra because no one knows how to deal with it, it seems like. There's a lot of really funny things going on with it. I will say I'm not super happy with the sideboard. I'd really like to rework the sideboard more. And obviously, if this deck was more geared towards being like the rock and had even more actual spot removal, probably be more efficient for us. But again, it's just not there. I think if I had a full play set of Assassin's Trophies, I would probably play them somewhere in this deck but I don't have them, so I'm only playing two of them. That's my my final things. Uh, Miss Cutter Hydra, I don't... This card constantly underperforms as well. That's the only other card I'm kind of like, eh, about in this entire deck. But overall, all in all, I would say the deck is pretty freaking fun to play. So, uh, thanks for watching. My name's Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games. Until next time, don't forget to game like a giant monster.